How's it going, everyone? My name is Joe Cox, and thank you for tuning in to Josie Cox Photo. As always, we do have a new plant for the video. Second, this is an unscripted video. And third, this video will cover my own personal workflows and experiences, so there will be some things included, some things excluded. Today's video, some exciting stuff, especially for anyone who's looking to do photography or videography as a career path. But today we are going to be covering successful cold contacting or cold calling, cold contacting. I kind of switch between the two. But the very first thing that I do want to kind of leave you with and have rattling always in the back of your mind whenever you're doing cold contacting is always keep things short and sweet. Again, this is just our very initial contact with a potential client. So there is no need to go into a lengthy sales pitch or anything. We just want to gauge their interest with our services and value that we can offer them. That's it. We're not trying to do anything else. We're just trying to set up a first meeting and learn more about each other. So the way I'm going to kind of break this video apart is going to be going over methods first, going over the things that you should include in your cold contact message. And then lastly, just a little bonus tip for you. But to start with the methods of cold contacting, there are four primary methods that I typically like. And just to go in order real quick of my most favorite to least favorite, the first I've got is email, followed by direct message, followed by phone calls, followed by in-person cold contacting. So email is great because it's short, sweet, concise, but it also allows your potential client to go back on their own terms and see your message. And it allows your potential client to go back and reread the message. That's going to be true with DMs as well. So DMs are nice because there again allows your uh, potential client to go back and read the message when they have the time. And it allows your potential contact to go back and reread the message just in case they don't catch it all on that first go. Third on that list was phone calling. Phone calling can be kind of hit or miss. If you get to a voicemail, it acts the exact same way as basically an email or a direct message where your contacts can go back and re reread or re-listen to that voicemail. But if you do get them on the phone, some problems kind of arise. A, you might be interrupting them at a bad time. And B, if they're not note taking or they're not really focused on you, all of that information might just go in one ear and write out the other. And then fourth on that list is in-person cold contacting. Same exact thing with the phone call, but you don't have the luxury of leaving a voicemail. So if you go in in person and try and do a little introduction that way, one, you might be catching them at a bad time. Two, if their focus isn't entirely on you, it might just same thing, go in one ear, right out the other. Or three, maybe you're unprepared, they're unprepared, and bad first impressions get left. So I do think in-person can definitely be very powerful, but I also think it can be kind of a hindrance. Hey you, yes you, quick interruption to your video. Did you know that I also make merch for this channel? I've got things like coffee cups for you. I've got you covered with wall art. I've even got you covered with hoodies and other apparel. I mean, just check out all of this good stuff. So not only are your purchases going to supporting this channel and helping others become more educated on photo and video, but a portion of those proceeds also get donated to the Simplify in America's Fund. So not only are you helping out this channel right here, but you're also supporting the men and women who have served in our armed forces. That is kick ass of you. Way to go you. But check out the link in the description down below. Go find something you absolutely adore. And let's continue to all support each other out here. It's tough out here. It really is. But I love you. You're each beautiful people and you know that. But otherwise, let's get you back to your video now. Now, talking about what you should include in your message, there's kind of five big things that I would recommend including in your message. And it should really be just about five sentences long. So first, you want to give them a personalized line of why you like them and why you'd want to work with them. So for an example, if you're trying to work with a skincare company, go do a little bit of research on that company. And then your personalized line, very first thing, should be something along the lines of, Hey, XYZ skincare company, I love the fact that you're cruelty-free, certified, or certified organic, and innovative in the skincare product market. That's all your personal line or personalized first line has to be. Now, the second thing we're going to include in our message is an intro about yourself. Again, very short one-liner. My name is X. This is what I do, and here's where I'm based at. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. 
third on the list, and this is a big one here, is you are going to give them the value or specific services that you can offer them. So you can leave it ambiguous and just say something along the lines of, I think that we could add value to your business through the use of more visual content, or you can make it a little bit more specific so that way your potential client doesn't have to guess at things. So you could say, I ran through your social media channels and I think you could benefit from X, Y, Z. Here would be the time frame and money cost. Let me know what you think. Now, last and kind of fourth, and I know I said five things, but fourth on that list and kind of the ender of your actual, actual message, excuse me, is going to be ask. Ask them for something. Don't just say, I look forward to hearing back from you. Ask them, when is the best time next week or yeah, next week to meet or when... How does this Thursday work for another phone call? Something along the lines where you're asking them to get back to you, not just kind of leaving it up in the air. It's like, uh, if you want to get back to me, I'd love to hear from you. No, we want a direct message. We want a direct ask from that potential client. And then the fifth thing that you're really, really going to end your message with is all the ways that they can get back in touch with you or check out your work. So you want to leave any links or any portfolios, and then you do want to include any contact information. So your phone number, your best email, anything like that, but definitely make sure you have that at the very end of your message as well. Now, finally, to kind of wrap things up, the little bonus tip is try, if you can, you can go through LinkedIn. There's all sorts of different ways you can go about it, but try and get to the decision maker directly. So if you're working with a company and you know they have a marketing team, go to the head of marketing first. Don't just go in and start saying, hey, my name's this and that. Who would I talk to? No, just try and get directly to the decision makers because they're the decision makers. They're going to be the people who say yes or no. And if you can pitch directly to them, much better chances than having to go kind of through the telephone line of like, hey, this person came in pass them on to the next person and trying to not never ending type of thing. So that is the last bonus tip there is try and get directly in touch with any decision makers. But that is going to cover today's video. Oops. Oh man, that is going to cover today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. I do appreciate each and every one of you. As always, don't forget to subscribe. I'm releasing so much good stuff right now. It's just information after information. You don't want to miss out. But anyways, guys, appreciate you. And I will catch you on the next video. Bye.